The Heritage Foundation's oversight project has released a new memo, including evidence which shows that the Department of Justice during the Trump administration well, may have concealed evidence in an effort to lend political support to Joe Biden. According to the memo, there are six ways the DOJ under the Trump and Biden administrations acted to conceal and condone connections between members of the Biden family and the CEFC, Chinese energy company. Joining us now to break down the key aspects of the memo is director of the Oversight Project at the Heritage Foundation, Mike Howell. Welcome to Rising. Hey, thanks for having me. So perhaps we should start by just top lining what the allegations are or what the alleged wrongdoing is with respect to Hunter Biden, the CF, uh, the Chinese energy company, and Joe Biden himself, because I think that some of the pushback the Democrats have been giving is even if you prove that Hunter Biden is corrupt, what does that actually mean about Joe Biden? Yeah, so on your, your second point first, Joe Biden's been established as a key part of the business strategy of Hunter Biden in multiple aspects. We could start with being in the meetings, being at dinners with key business partners, Hunter traveling on Air Force Two, the sharing of bank accounts between Hunter and Joe, the payment of 10% to the big guy. Uh, we can go through the multiple pseudonym emails and burner phones that Joe used to communicate with Hunter through the course of his business dealings. And we can also go to the ongoing cover up and the sweetheart treatment of Hunter Biden by Joe Biden's DOJ. Joe Biden has been involved in, in all aspects of his family's life. I mean, he was the product as uh, Devin Archer testified. Uh, I think Comer's identified well over 10 to, to 20 Biden family members who were receiving the improper payments of, you know, north of $20 million from some of the most corruption or corrupt areas of the world. And the memo we put out is just one aspect of that. But all trails lead directly to Joe Biden. I know this is the, the left's defense of these allegations. I just don't think that's their, their best one, because everything I just went over uh, shows Joe Biden involved in this routinely. So one of the other areas of pushback we hear is that, you know, if it's if it's so rock solid, if it's so out there, you know, why did uh, under the Trump administration nothing kind of come out of this? That's a point Brianna's brought up uh, many times. So in, in your memo, I think you begin to answer that question. So so take it away. Absolutely. So one aspect of this memo, it's just a slice of the corruption pie here. Uh, Hunter was in business, obviously, with the CCP that's been established. One of the key individuals there was a man named Patrick Ho who was actually arrested uh, under a foreign corrupts practice violation when he was bribing, I think, a Ugandan and, and Chad official. So he served some jail time. But in the course of the prosecution of Patrick Ho, who threw his, you know, who was working with a company called CEFC, uh, was working with Hunter as well. And CEFC tried to acquire Westinghouse, obviously a company with massive uh, assets for the U.S. government, nuclear-related things. Um, Patrick Ho became the subject of FISA surveillance, okay, because he was a known CCP asset. In fact, Hunter Biden referred to Patrick Ho as the bleeping spy chief of China on his on his laptop. And so during the course of the prosecution investigation of Patrick Ho, a lot of very funny things happened and out of process things. And uh, when we see these things as investigators, those are red flags. Here's a couple of them. One is it appears in you know the public records that DOJ used, they made every attempt to hide the connections to the Bidens, including the, the redacting of Hunter's name in the transcripts. Two is that if there was FISA surveillance of Patrick Ho, and we know that there is a series of ongoing communications between Ho and Biden, why were that was that document set not used in furtherance of the other prosecutions? And then you have this very you know odd fact pattern, which to me stinks of a, a shady deal, is Patrick's whole lawyer actually ended up being Hunter Biden during the case of this. Hunter testified at his plea hearing that he was paid $1 million in legal services for Patrick Ho. Now, I seriously doubt Hunter was providing any criminal defense uh, legal services. It, it looks to me like a sweetheart payment to, to buy influence. But this is a million dollars, you know, paid by a CCP agent to the son of, you know, the now president to help build up his political bona fides. And then you also have very questionable uh, FBI entanglement in this. You have somebody who uh, named Charles McGonigal, who I believe has a status hearing tomorrow in a case where he was taking undisclosed and improper meetings with foreign officials as it related to the case. So all of these things are going on that stink to, to high heaven. And you have the Trump administration's DOJ, which, I mean, we use the term Trump administration to uh, infer that he had some sort of control or you know, perhaps he did have potential control. But the point I'm making is this was not a, uh, you know, Trump prosecution of Patrick Ho. This was very settled bureaucrats handling this case in a manner that demonstrated political favoritism. And so when I hear why did Trump's DOJ prosecute these things fully, I agree they should have. But the fact is 
through this memo and other things we've released, it shows that DOJ was not on full bore with going after, you know, the Bidens in this. And there's a lot more we can talk about, but I'll leave it there. Yeah, I'll be honest. I am I am very sympathetic to the idea that Hunter Biden seems to have, even if not in a legally um, accountable, like accountable way, uh, participated in influence peddling, definitely uh, has extremely bad optics and has behaved in a way that diminishes the integrity of the offices his father has held. At the same time, it's curious to me that we would characterize the actions under the Biden administration and his DOJ as intentionally working to cover up um, Hunter Biden's actions and protect Hunter Biden, and that there's all of this direction that we presume there, while letting the Trump administration's DOJ off the hook, saying, well, he couldn't possibly control the DOJ, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I am still not convinced that you can say that the Trump DOJ didn't vet this as far as it could or wanted to. So either the Trump DOJ was also not interested in fully following this through, perhaps because this kind of corruption is frankly endemic to political families, including Trump's own family, and they don't want to go down that road of saying we're no longer able to get our relatives in these kind of influence peddling schemes. At the same time that we're saying whatever happens now under uh, Joe Biden's presidency, is of course an intentional cover up. I mean, how do you how do you parse that? Why why aren't you more frustrated or why why don't you have more skepticism that there isn't perhaps more there and that Donald Trump wasn't able to find more or on the alternative didn't want to find more? Right. I completely agree with you in your your second part there. I think the Trump DOJ did an awful job here. I think they did an awful job in a lot of things, particularly when you have former AG Barr saying that they investigated all these allegations of voter fraud. And we now know that they did not do that. Uh, as it relates to a lot of the handling of some of the FBI investigations that were put the, the brakes on, as it relates to the FD 1023 and uh, other documents that have come to light uh, demonstrating evidence implicating Biden and corruption, they clearly did not fall through on those. You have the FBI at that time opening as many cases based on very little predication against President Trump, some of which are still ongoing, uh, and then shutting the door on others. And so I think it's completely fair to say that Donald Trump did not take full control of the Department of Justice and FBI. And so I do not read the actions of them as an attempt to sort of, you know, get after these things. I think they were disinterested in that. And there was no uh, control over those organizations, even at the times with confirmed Senate leadership atop of them. I think there was an apprehension to go into this space, uh, particularly when on they were on the defensive the whole time for the, the Russia now hoax that we can all agree on, a uh, narrative that was peddled through and, and then debunked. But as it relates to President Biden, I don't think they had an option here. I mean, they had to go after these things. With the firing of Viktor Shokin, uh, the Ukrainian prosecutor that was going after uh, Hunter, and then this series of actions that relate to Ukraine, there was corruption staring the U.S. government square in the face. And I think we're dealing with the consequences of that now and this kind of long and winding fact pattern that was allowed to get more complicated. Uh, the money laundering, which appears to me to be the scheme they used, even more, you know, accounts and other things that are taking more time to unwind, all in the context of us having this global, you know, kind of relationship with pouring billions of dollars into Ukraine, a region that has corrupted our own politics at the highest level. And so I put the blame squarely at the feet of all those in the FBI and DOJ, even those, actually particularly those under the Trump administration. And uh, to your first point, it is clear as day to me that the DOJ under Biden has given Hunter Biden the sweetheart uh, treatment. This is evident with the plea deal, which we were in federal court and submitted a monster of an amicus brief, first one to do to point out how out of order that plea bargain was where they wanted to let Hunter off the hook for everything. Right. Uh, this news Although that is of a, the that's a Trump appointee, right? David Weiss. David Weiss was, uh, he's blue slipped in Delaware, which means he was the guy the two senators would allow, the two Democrat senators. He is by no characterization a Trump -y. But yes, Donald Trump put him forward as a U.S. attorney. He was then again put forward uh, by Democrats. I, I think, obviously, uh, it was a mistake to have that guy in the spot. It's even a bigger mistake to uh, the earlier point about Biden's role in this to appoint him the special counsel. When I think Weiss should be the one also under investigation for his kind of collusion and sweetheart treatment of the Hunter investigation and what he did to the IRS career prosecutors, whistleblowers who have testified publicly uh, as to how their investigation had the brakes put on it. Mike, I'm sure you can appreciate that 
to the casual ear, it does sound like every time there's an investigation and it doesn't turn up results, every time there's an investigator who doesn't turn up results, it does seem like the next move is to say, well, the investigator who was appointed by the guy who is now likely to be the Republican nominee and who had the most to win and most to gain by having a successful investigation just did a bad job. He made a mistake. We have to plumb another well. There's another investigation to be done. If we put another guy in charge, then we'll turn up results. And that this has been going on now for five, six years, you know, what, what, what is the end of this? What, what do you see to be, who do you think should be in charge? What kind of investigation would you like to see? We have the House now, a Republican House, all over this. You know, at what point does this start to seem as, like as much of a political persecution as the repeated indictments of Donald Trump is seen in the eyes of many people in this country? Right. I don't blame Americans for having lost faith in the institutions, especially those at law enforcement. I, I agree with all those concerns. I frankly don't have faith in those institutions. But I will point out something that people, investigators on the outside, people like the Heritage Oversight Project, whistleblowers, a few staffers in the House of Representatives have turned up mountains of evidence that the FBI, allegedly the most premier law enforcement agency in the world, uh, either did not have or did not you know, make use of or Garland did not. And so evidence is being put forward in the format of, you know, whether it's bank records, uh, money, money movements, uh, connections, whistleblowers uh, talking about the evidence they discovered. And so we should be our first question should be, why didn't the FBI have this or do anything with it? This stuff's only coming out now. And so I think that goes to the integrity of, of the system, which since the Hillary Clinton saga with with Comey, I think has really just fumbled their way through the highest level uh, dealings in this country, unless it relates to President Trump, then it's full bore ahead at every different level of the system. But that's just a, a different case usage. Mike Howell, thank you so much for joining us. That was very informative. We really appreciate it. Thank you both.